smaller arrow. There we go. Okay, so basically, as I'm hovering over different colors here, you'll notice that these values are kind of starting to change. Um, so if you kind of think of it as a grid in X, Y, uh, this is palette 2, color 3, this is palette 3, color 3. Um, so I mainly just wanted to point this out because when I'm kind of pointing out what colors do later, I'll be referring to the palette and color values here uh, because those are basically rows um, which are tied to specific things. I uh, kind of just wanted to point that out before we got into it. Um, so if you click on a color in here, um, it'll load up a color window that's kind of similar to picking a color in Microsoft Paint. Um, actually, if you load up Paint, it's like the exact same window. Uh, <laughs> Evening Velociraptor, how are you doing tonight? Um, I definitely don't consider myself like an expert or anything, but since I've gotten a couple of questions about it, I thought I would try to do my best and help out. Um, <clears throat> so, picking colors in Lunar Magic is pretty simple because you basically just get to pick a color anywhere you want on this like rainbow grid, <laughs> um, ranging from like very saturated colors to not very saturated colors in any color you want, pretty much. Uh, the Super Nintendo is capable of doing like a lot of colors, so if you want to get like really specific with your colors, you can. Um, if you're trying to read color values in Lunar Magic, uh, most of the time I would recommend using hue, saturation, and luminosity instead of RGB. Um, and like I don't want to get like super tech, like I wrote kind of technical notes, but I don't really want to get like super technical about it. Uh, but basically, hue from values 0 to 255. Uh, it changes basically what color you're at. Uh, so if you're at zero, you're starting at red. If you get to like the 30s, you're more in the yellows. If you're in the greens, you're more in like the 60s, the 70s. Until you get to 255, which wraps around from purple back to red, pretty much. So you can either go from red to orange or from red to purple if you want to. Um, just kind of pointing out what that one does. Um, saturation is basically when you're moving up or down on this to either make your colors really vivid, um, which is really helpful for like sprites and stuff, or moving them down the grid if you're trying to make like desaturated foregrounds or stuff that's closer to gray but like still kind of blue as opposed to like a more foresty green gray, I guess. Um, so saturation will also be important for stuff later, but I'm kind of just explaining what these do. Um, and then luminosity is also kind of important. That's what this bar is for. Uh, so basically, if you have more luminosity in a color, it's closer to white. And if you have less luminosity in a color, it's closer to black. So with any color on here, you can also basically have any variation of it, like closer to white or closer to black. Um, so. <laughs> It's kind of complicated, but basically all of that is saying that you have a lot of control over your colors in Lunar Magic. Um, so just be aware of that as we get a little bit farther in. Um, so that's kind of the basics of like what to do with colors and stuff. Uh, hey Nicoke, how are you doing tonight? Thanks for stopping by. I'm going to turn this arrow off now. Also, uh, let me know if the audio is weird. I tried to level it, but now that there's more people, <laughs> it might be a little bit more helpful, I guess. Um, so, one thing I wanted to cover, um, like, I don't want to do, like, a whole palette editor tutorial thing, but one thing I did want to cover is making gradients in the palette editor, um, because that will be important for kind of making smooth stuff. Um, so if you're in the palette editor and you're trying to change colors and you're trying to do a palette manually, um, you end up having to pick five colors and it's kind of hard to do. Uh, so kind of a shortcut that you'll see a lot of, uh, palettes do, I guess, is you'll just pick a start color and an end color. Um, and then if you see right here, you can basically alt left click and alt right click to set endpoints for a gradient. So, alt right click here and alt right click there, 
and all of a sudden it turned into this really smooth like purple to yellow gradient using like kind of grayed out colors that would honestly be like kind of a nightmare to do on your own but Lunar Magic just kind of does a lot of the work for you uh, so that's the main thing you want to pay attention to for like shortcuts and stuff um, and then like I said, make sure if you're doing any kind of palette changes in a level that you're always checking this. If you don't, like let me just um, uncheck this. Um, if you don't click this and you start messing with the palettes, you're actually going to be changing like default foreground palettes. Um, which will mess up stuff uh, mostly in the credits, um, but it can mess up other stuff elsewhere. So just be safe and always click this. Um, even if you end up wanting to like use this palette in another level, um, it's really easy to just export it as a custom palette and import the custom palette into another one. Um, so just always check this pretty much. Um, and then before I get into like what each color does, because that's going to kind of take a while. Um, Basically all you guys need to know roughly about the colors, and again I'm referring to these palette comma color um, chart locators I guess. Everything on this column right here is going to be what you are editing for like 99% of your stuff and levels. Uh, I'm not going to get into anything that's over here because honestly I haven't really had to edit these that often. Um, like I've kind of edited these colors a little bit and I'll explain that later, but for the most part you're not really going to use too much of uh, color A through color F a lot of the time because it's for like extended sprites and stuff. So most of this tutorial is going to be for this part over here. Yeah, it's some layer 3 stuff too, um, it's not like all layer 3 though, like again most of what you're going to be editing is going to be from palette 0, 0 through F, 8. Um, so that's going to be most of what this is focused on. Um, I don't really have a lot of expertise over here, but just kind of wanted to point that out. Um, okay. So... Where is... Okay. So, this isn't like a foolproof, um, like, representation of what each color does, but I did kind of want to point it out a little bit. Um, does that work? Yeah, that works. Okay. So, kind of covering roughly what each square in this does. I don't want to go, like, square by square. Uh, but the top row up here uh, is basically just used for most uh, backgrounds. So if I'm flipping around, don't save level, you can kind of see that this top row matches most of a background. So here it matches the hills and the water one, it kind of matched some of the um, architecture in that one. Uh, here it switches to the little uh, pointier hills instead of the octagon ones. Uh, here it switches to the diamonds and stuff. Most of the time, uh, this is going to be most of what you edit for backgrounds. Uh, row 1 is used for backgrounds, but it's more used for extended backgrounds, uh, such as the water, which... Uh, like some of these highlights are used for, I believe, <coughs> the foreground um, pillar things. I guess I don't really know what you would call those. Um, and then it's also used for. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. I gotta find one. Uh, for this background, it's used for some of the highlights that are used in between here. Uh, this background specifically is kind of a nightmare to edit, <laughs> which is why you don't really see it super often in hacks. Uh, but it's because you end up having to edit like four different spots on this palette editor to get like smooth gradients here. Because uh, Super Mario World kind of codes these this background specifically kind of weird. Um, it's also used in layer 3 castles and rocks and stuff. 
Um, I didn't write down an example of a level that has those. So hopefully we can find some. So like the layer three rocks in this background right here um, correspond to layer two stuff right here. Um, so most of the time with backgrounds, I guess what I was trying to edit, um, you're going to be editing the top row. Uh, most of the time up to here, I don't think too many backgrounds even use this um, like light blue. Um, and I guess one thing I do want to point out, you can edit the blacks and whites of backgrounds. So like zero zero and zero one can be edited. Uh, this is kind of useful if um, you're trying to make a background, like a custom background or something, um, and it has like a harsh black outline on the edge. Uh, sometimes players, I've noticed, will kind of read that as like a solid foreground object and like try to not go through it or something, even though it's like background. Um, so if you like edit this to like a softer color, uh, you can change it sometimes. Sometimes, if you notice, uh, you have to use custom ASM, uh, but Lunar Magic's pretty good. I thought you could actually edit it in that one. Huh, used to be able to. That might be a Lunar Magic 3.0 thing. Thanks. Um, so, row 2, right here, is going to be used for most of your foregrounds. Um, so you'll notice if I edit this to like some crazy blue, it changes the foreground right there. Uh, the specific order of this will not be the same from foreground to foreground. So like this is a smooth gradient, but if you go to an outdoor one, you'll notice that like this is used for the dirt and then this is used for like the low light of the grass and then it goes back to the dirt and then back to the grass um, so depending on the background that you have you'll have to kind of play around with what color goes where in the foreground um, but for the most part most of your foreground stuff is going to be done on this row uh, next is going to be a row that's mostly for lava um, I think 10 e. okay uh, so, mostly this row is going to be for lava. It's also used for uh, non-animated water and the semi-solid platforms from this level. So like this part right here is used in this foreground. Uh, most of the time, like I said, it's just foreground stuff. Um, it's more foreground that you can interact with, I guess, if you want to think of it that way. Um, Next up, row four. Um, this is the only row that you'll notice like has a pretty distinct color right here. Um, and that's because these three are used for cement blocks. And for some reason, cement blocks use like a weird order of the palette where like this is not where you'd think it'd be. Um, so just be aware of that if you're changing cement blocks. Um, and then these colors are mostly used for the ice blue pipes. Um, Of course I don't have them in this level. Um, but honestly most of the time if you're going to be trying to create a custom palette um, this is the one that I like to use personally. Uh, not a lot of objects in the game really use this. Oh and this is actually used for these little like turnip platforms. Uh, this part right here. Um, and yeah, that's actually a good point. Um, if you're ever confused about uh, if a color is being used in a palette, um, kind of just change it to a color that you'll be able to identify right away. And then obviously it'll kind of jump out a bit more. Um, that's normally what I do if I'm ever lost in a palette and trying to figure out if tweaking a color is going to mess something up. Um, just kind of jump to a random color and change it to something that really stands out from what the color used to be. Um, and you should see if it's used somewhere, um, just in case you're trying to change palettes and stuff. Um, thank you for that, by the way. Uh, so next up is row 5. Um, I don't <laughs> really know what these browns are used for. I want to say that they're used for 
um, some highlights and bushes and stuff, but I'm not 100% sure. But the greens are used for pretty much every object that's green in the game. Uh, and like the tops of these uh, bushes, um, I believe it's also used for this. Um, green pipes and levels and stuff will also use this palette. Um, and as you'll notice, uh, basically the top half of the palette is going to be used for objects right here and the bottom half is going to be used for sprites. Uh, so basically everything from palette 0 through palette um, 8, I believe, or through palette 7, are all just used for objects that Mario interacts with but aren't actually like sprite objects. Um, and then these are going to be all of your pretty basic sprites, and then I believe it goes into extended sprites and stuff over here. Um, but just kind of wanted to point that out, I guess. Sorry. <laughs> uh, row 6, you'll notice, kind of has a unique color here. Um, and it's one that is kind of impossible to change through Lunar Magic, as far as I know. Uh, there is way to change it, uh, but you have to use custom programs. Um, and this editor is basically, or this tutorial, I guess, is only going to focus on stuff that you can do directly in Lunar Magic. So. Um, if you're interested in that, um, I think there's stuff on SMW Central for it. Uh, but basically this color is used for dragon coins. Um, if I load up one of them real quick. So you'll notice that they basically pulsate the same. Um, you can use this color if you're using like editor programs because um, this is the only color that actually like flashes between a couple um, People will use this for animated death blocks and stuff um, So if you're wondering how they do that they basically just pull this color Edit it to what they want and then use this color in custom graphics um, But I guess that's kind of important to point out the rest of this is basically just used for coins as far as I know um, it's also used for turn blocks, spikes, and munchers, um, and basically foreground yellow objects. Uh, the game kind of tries to keep stuff together pretty nice, which makes it pretty easy to edit palettes when you know where to go. Uh, but if you don't know what stuff does, it kind of gets hard to edit. Um, and then the last one for this objects thing down here is obviously all the stuff that's like blue and pink. Um, throw blocks are this color right here, as well as the purple spin coins, um, which I know are in Super Mario World somewhere, but I'm not going to go looking for. Um, these are also used for um, part of the goal post, the darker color right here. If you edit this one, it will edit um, those dark stripes and I believe this color is the light stripes um, but like I said this is kind of the most useless palette for the most part because you can pretty much work around everything if you change this to just kind of whatever colors you want um, and that'll be useful for if you're trying to create custom palettes for stuff which I'll hopefully go over soon um, and then row 8 marks where the palette starts to edit um, sprites instead of um, foreground objects and stuff. Uh, this is Mario as well as like moles and other brown sprites. Um, this is like gray falling platforms and spikes. Um, this is like pokies, sumo bros, sparkies, um, some koopas. Uh, basically all the colors of Koopas will just be down here, and I believe the Koopa links of each color are right off to the side. Um, again, if you're not sure, just kind of play around and edit it to some wild color to see. So like, that one didn't edit the Koopa that I wanted. Um, right here. So like, if I was trying to edit that Koopa, I could just change this random to like a green. And you can see that changing it to the green made that <laughs> Koopa look a little slick. Um, so basically just kind of match up what sprites look like they're um, editing the colors of, I guess. Um, it's pretty, like, all of these are fairly obvious. Like if you're editing a sprite that's yellow, it's going to be this one. If you're editing a sprite that's blue, it's going to be this. 
This last row right here, row E, is kind of the only weird one. Um, and I actually didn't really know how to describe it until I <laughs> went through this to describe it. Or like to try to write down a script for stuff. Um, but it's kind of what I call the big sprite editor. Um, so if you go to a level with a big boo, uh, if I was going to edit this, you'll notice that it changed the big boo highlight color when I made it hella dark, or if I wanted to make it green. Um, and it also does it for um, the Bowser balls that are used in the final boss fight. Um, if you end up using those as a custom element, it'll be down here. Um, and then I believe the f uh, Porky Puffer fish also used this palette down here. Um, so basically any of the like 2x2 two two sprites, I guess, as far as I know, will try to use this one. Um, the only one that doesn't is that big green gas bubble, which just uses the green. Um, and then as far as I know, this is layer 3 tides. Um, or some specific layer 3 stuff. Basically anything past palette F, or like palette F, and then down into here, is stuff that you're not really going to need to edit like 99% of the time. Um, and if you do, it's most of the time for like custom sprites or foregrounds and stuff, and most of the time those will come with a custom palette. Um, which I guess this is probably a good time to describe that um, before I go into color stuff. If you ever need to just make a custom palette really quick um, and you need to export it to another level, all you need to do is click um, this star right here without the arrow next to it and it'll basically try to export it in a random .pal file. Um, so. So we'll just name it Purple Forest and then switch to another level. Sure, we'll save it. And say that we want that in this, like we want that same shade of purple as this background. Um, it's the sun. Okay, let me get rid of um, this now. Alright, so say that we needed um, the purple that I got from that forest in this castle because we were making like a purple world or something um, you would just click this button to import the palette that you just made um, so purpleforest.pal and you would open it obviously <laughs> this looks bad because it's using the forest palette with the custom uh, castle stuff uh, but the purples that we needed were there um, and you can use that if you're careful and most of the time if you're copying palettes between uh, same backgrounds um, which doing that kind of led me to a point I was going to make later um, you'll notice that switching between uh, foreground styles and background styles uh, colors are used very differently between uh, level types I guess so depending on what kinds of levels you're making um, you may need to have completely different palettes even if you're using like similar color ideas um, so just be careful about that I guess uh, because like you can see when I'm flipping through here like colors are used very differently depending on if you're using like a cave or if you're using ghost or if you're using like the plains foreground and stuff um, so Thank you for the follow, uh, ghetto slash fish. Hope you're doing well. Uh, okay, so before I get into how to actually like use custom palettes and stuff to your advantage, um, there's a couple of things that I kind of wanted to cover about color specifically. Um, so the main thing that you're going to want when you're trying to make custom palettes, um, first of all, is a basic sense of, like, how you're going to make a contrasting foreground and background, um, and just trying to make sure that your colors make sense without being too visually overwhelming. Um, I'm not really going to talk too much about, like, 
what colors work well together with other colors because that kind of seems more like a color theory thing unless you guys want me to I guess um, but just for example if I'm trying to make this background with like this green um, I'm not gonna want to also make like a similar green foreground because even though this looks like different like first of all this looks different but only because this background is like super bright um, and that's because I used a high saturation and kind of high luminosity background um, if you want your players to like not hate your eyes after a while uh, generally try to use less saturation in your backgrounds like most of my backgrounds tend to tend to be around like the 150 saturation range and that honestly will still come out pretty bright on some TVs um, so just be careful about your colors I guess like, like honestly even that looks better and that's going from green to purple which is like a really harsh weird gradient that isn't really good uh, and then I kind of wanted to point this out so say you were just trying to have like an all green level like because you just really like this color I guess uh, you'll notice that it, I pulled this color from right here to right here and even though it's the same color that's still technically used in spots in the background uh, because I have really harsh contrast in the lines between um, and the lines between the edge right here and the middle of it uh, even though it's the same color it still like is somewhat legible for a foreground um, I still wouldn't use this personally just because that seems like kind of a hard color to read um, so generally try to like have some kind of contrast I generally try to have contrast in both what kinds of colors I'm using and the saturation between the foreground and background uh, so an easy way to kind of make your background stand out is either to have a really high saturation background or have a really low saturation background Oops. <laughs> low really saturation background and you'll notice that it kind of like grayed out the background a little bit more which instantly kind of brought your foreground a little bit more up than it would have been if you had everything as the same kind of flatness I guess um, so it's kind of hard to describe the difference between consoles and emulator uh, but generally colors are going to be a lot more saturated on TV than they're going to be on PC and they're always going to be a little bit different in emulator than they're going to be at Lunar Magic so don't be surprised if like you make a palette that you think is like perfect and then people play it and they're like this is way too bright and you end up having to turn pretty much everything down by like 200 saturation <laughs> and like that's kind of an exaggeration I guess you normally won't be turning it down by that much but um, I've had a couple of palettes that I've made where I had like in editor they look really nice and even in emulator they're still pretty like vibrant but you can still read what's going on um, and then people take it onto their super NT or they take it onto their like actual console stuff uh, and it's just like super in their face um, and I guess sort of on that note um, don't use like pure white in like anything really uh, because when you have pure white on stuff it's gonna be like blaringly white on TV it's not as bad on emulator because like emulators are sort of used to displaying white but like if people play on CRT and stuff like pure white like this is gonna just like blind their eyes so even if you have something that's supposed to be white generally try to like scale it down a little bit or desaturate and scale it down if you're worried about it being like too colored I guess yeah um, so colors are kind of hard to figure out like if you make a palette like this it's never gonna look the same depending on if you play it on like one TV to another TV um, like people just kind of have different setups for their TVs and stuff so it's gonna be kind of hard to make your palette like universal I guess um, so generally you want to try to make it as 
easy to read as possible while still having the general colors that you want. Uh, and generally for palettes, I guess this is a good time to mention this. Um, and this is just kind of like a personal rule that I follow. Um, but for Mario World specifically, I try to not edit um, too far off of what the colors generally are. Um, so like for the fish, for example, you can change it to some like super bright blue or something if you want to think this is the fish color. Uh, you can change it to some wild color if you want to, but um, when people are playing, they generally want stuff to be as easy to read as possible. Um, so if you completely change the colors of stuff, it sometimes messes with that, and people can sometimes get a little upset about that. <laughs> um, so just be careful, I guess, if you're going to mess with the colors super radically. Uh, I generally try to keep stuff as close to stuff as I can. So like for this floating carrot platform thing, if I was going to use this, like you can edit it to be like a completely different color if you want to. Uh, actually it's not that color, it's this one. So like if I was changing the green to be some weird purple or something, I can do that. But you want to keep the contrast between this purple and this orange still, otherwise it kind of starts to look like a different object. So like I'll make this part down here like a weird yellow, I guess. So even though I changed the color of it now, like the average player is going to be able to see that this is still that weird platform that sinks into the ground because they know like from playing the game that something like this with a foreground that's different than the part that like sinks into the water exists in the game even though it's not this color um, so even though I could like completely change the colors of this it's still readable to what it should be um, and that's generally what you're gonna want to try to um, do as much as you can um, and even just looking at this background for a little bit it was a little intense so um, make sure this is in the editor. So what I did is I took this down, um, I took it down in saturation because it was a little intense, and I also took it down in luminosity. Uh, and I'm just going to redo the gradient so it smooths it out. And you'll notice that basically what it did in addition to smoothing it out is it made it darker overall. So even though I started with a color that was the exact same thing that I used in the background, I've now created like kind of a different color scheme entirely. Um, and it ended up just throwing it into something that still stands out, but uses the same color. Um, and if I wanted like crazy contrast here, I could probably turn this green part into purple. I believe this is where it is. Yeah. So now you can very easily see where the foreground starts and ends, and the sort of starts to take stuff um, in a different direction. But you gotta be careful because like say I wanted to use the Yoshi in this level now um, my green Yoshis because it shares the same spot in the palette are now gonna be purple Yoshis and like if you're only using one Yoshi in the level this may not really be that big of a deal like you may be able to get away with just having this color of a Yoshi and players will just kinda figure out that it's a green Yoshi um, but if you have this being like a Yoshi level where you have to switch between a bunch of colors and then suddenly you're giving them a color that's not like a regular Super Mario World color, uh, that can start to throw stuff off. Um, so just be careful of your palettes and kind of work it in with your level design. So like if you're using Yoshis in a level, maybe don't edit um, these colors if you're using a bunch of green Yoshis or switch it to something that can still be red as green. So like if I wanted this, but I didn't want it to be like the standard green, I could make it more of like a teal that goes into like a chartreuse or something like that. And then if I put down a Yoshi, uh, why did you not update?
<laughs> oh. Basically try to keep it as close to the colors as you can. Um, if you need to change the colors wildly, like, you're able to, but just be mindful of the contrast that stuff still had. Um, just so you don't lose, like, depth in the sprites, and most importantly, like, readability in the sprites. Um, so, once you know all of this, um, you can basically edit stuff that's already there. Um, and that's kind of helpful, but one of the best things about Lunar Magic is that it'll let you actually create... So, okay, so this is, uh, my map 16 of my race level. Um, and you can kind of see in here that I copied elements from the background and put them into foreground territory. Um, that was because I was using background pieces as aesthetics for my race level. Um, but you'll notice in map 16 that when you click on a tile, it shows you what palette it's currently using. And say I want this forest to be incorporated in this level, but I don't want it using palette 0 because it would just blend in too much. I can switch it to palette 1, and then I can edit the palette editor and use this pot on palette one that's only being used for like this neon blue that's not in anything and change it to uh, i guess we'll just go purple because that's what i was going for i guess so i can change it to this all right click all right click and then all of a sudden i'm able to use all of these so, I'm able to use this as palette 1 instead of palette 0. Um, if you highlight over things that are multiple palettes, this turns into palette like dash dash. Um, so what you can do is just highlight everything and reselect it all as palette 1. And you'll notice, sometimes stuff gets weird um, because palettes use different spots. Um, so like this spot, for example, is just super white in this foreground, but you can just change um, this color right here to make it dark, make it this or something. Um, um, so that, that's kind of a trick I wasn't like planning on covering, but if you go down in map 16, um, your current bank of your background will always be available but if you try to just like import stuff from right here, it's not going to let you. Because um, basically it's using the background bank and not the foreground bank. But what you can do is just highlight everything and drag it up to like a usable map 16 thing. Put on 5 for example. And now I can use all of this as foreground. Um, you probably can do it by the 8x8 editor also if you really wanted to. Um, but I generally just find it's easier to just the entire thing and then move it around as you need to and then like if you need to make weird tiles and stuff you can use the 8x8 stuff and move around with that if you need to um, yeah I found out about that once uh, <laughs> kind of on accident actually um, it was pretty fun to start messing around with that um, so the main reason I was showing that off is because this makes it pretty easy uh, sure we'll save this this makes it pretty easy to make foregrounds that are different palettes um, so like if I were to make a new one of these use palette 3 I'm not gonna have lava in this level so I can just make this Let's make this one just this orange. And then I'm just all right clicking at both of these. And then all of a sudden I have like a lighter dirt also that I could use. Um, so basically in map 16, you can use anything from palette zero to palette seven by default. Um, I think there's patches that you can use to go into the extended sprites range and stuff. Uh, but to be perfectly honest, for most color schemes that people will like be able to read quickly, I've noticed that it's generally better to just kind of stick with the seven palettes that you have. Um, 
And again, like I said, palette seven in here refers to the palette color. Oh, sorry. The palette color um, boxes right here. So basically, if I have an object in map 16 that uses palette zero, it's using this row. If I have an object that uses palette seven, it's using this row. Uh, most of the time when you have a palette that's done by default in Super Mario World, there's normally one row that's not used super often or that's used infrequently enough, I guess, um, that you can kind of mess with it and make it your own custom palette. Um, if you're like super tight on space, that might be kind of hard to do. Or if you're like mixing a bunch of foreground elements and stuff together, that might be hard to do. Uh, but for the most part, you should be able to get like custom palettes and stuff. Um, and I guess let's just go back to that level that <laughs> we were sort of making a custom palette for, I guess. Um, so after I've like started to make a custom palette, I'll generally start to um, try to design a level. Um, and as I design a level, I may notice that, for example, I have these logs and I want to use these logs but I don't really like that they're using the color of this because this blue is not really um, this blue is not really like readable as foreground I guess that you can stand on if you're using it here um, and that's kind of just like color rules that you sort of accidentally set up when you're level designing so like if you're playing this level for the first time, you're going to read that this green is a pretty safe color to stand on, and as you start to walk forward, you'll start to notice that like this color is transparent. If I were to use this color as suddenly something that would like hurt you, like if I were to map 16 like this wall to be like munchers or something, um, players generally like don't like that that much because it's sort of like betraying what you've already shown them earlier in the level uh, so like similarly if I were to have um, if I were to have these things um, as like the main ground in the level um, like if I just like got rid of all this entirely um, and I put this right here and all of a sudden I had one of these platforms that like just like launched you up super high or something into like a ceiling of bungers even though I had shown you before that platforms that look like this like sink uh, players generally tend to get kind of mad about that um, probably a more applicable example of that I guess uh, would basically be any level with like thwomps that go in like any direction. <laughs> hey Marcy, how's it going? Thank you. Hope you're doing well. You're getting tired. It's... I don't know what time it is. Uh, I'll okay. Well, I'll try to wrap it up as soon yeah, as I can. Wrap it up soon. I was just letting you know. Oh. So you can try to time it. Okay. Anyway. Thanks. Well, glad you ran into hotel. And hi, Amy. How are you doing? Hope you're doing well. I read that you were having kind of a harder time getting... Oh, good. You guys are both in a room together. That's good to hear. Um, let me go back to 102. So basically what I was trying to say, uh, I got kind of distracted, but like, if you have a bunch of like thwomps um, that are the same color and thwomp of... Like, just say all your thwomps for this like orange color all of your orange thwomps go down and then all of a sudden you have an orange thwomp that just goes sideways it's kind of a cheap shot to the player because you didn't really use a new color to like identify that this new thwomp that went sideways like did anything different um so as the players like playing the level they'll kind of just read this as a thwomp that goes down instead of suddenly a new thwomp uh, probably didn't do like the best <laughs> job <laughs> hey melon how's it going um so i think that basically covers um 
custom palette stuff um, contrast generally just try to keep the contrast that sprites already have and foreground already has um, you'll notice that if um, you make um, so like your start color is this and your end color is also this if I make a palette that uses a gradient like that the gradient doesn't really look that good and it also has like a really sharp black edge for some reason um, and that's because I used um, that's because I used colors that had similar saturation and luminosity so even though like the colors themselves were pretty different um, like I'll change it to a more drastic example um, like this looks really bad but just as a drastic example uh, like there's not really that much contrast in this and it changes colors a lot and it's just a really harsh background but uh, if you change the luminosity uh, as well and then smooth out the gradient it doesn't look great because this is super high still uh, and also a little bit harsh of a transition of color uh, so move it a little bit closer to green maybe even move it a little bit down to here and like even though this isn't really the most attractive color it suddenly becomes a standout thing and then you'll notice that as you kind of start to tweak colors like maybe this color isn't the best color for this um, you'll kind of notice some colors start to stand out a little bit more than others uh, and then you can copy paste colors if you want to use the same color but just like super dark or something okay so I don't really like any of the changes I made but I was kind of just making the example that when you have contrast um, when you have contrast in your colors even if you're like not changing the hue of the colors that much um, if you change uh, the luminosity to make it either closer to black or closer to white um, as well as changing uh, the saturation that you have so like if I wanted this background to really stand out which you generally don't want to do but if I wanted to I can make that super vibrant and in your face but you'll notice that it's generally better to have it kind of flattened um, Seems like everybody is in a room. Hi, Mega and D4. How are you guys doing? Um, and then the last thing I kind of wanted to cover. Um, by the way, if you guys have any questions about stuff, feel free to shout it out. I guess. Uh, but the last thing I wanted to cover, like that, I had notes on, um, is a little bit of layer two stuff. Um, and I didn't write down a layer two level, so we're gonna have to find one. Okay. So, if you're editing a layer 2 level, palettes are kind of weird. And I think it's because Super Mario will try to like condense stuff a bunch, and when they condense stuff for layer 2, it sometimes gets messy. Uh, let me make this screen a little bit bigger for this, actually. I have it zoomed in so you can read the palette editor a little bit easier, but... You guys are just going to be on chat, or chat's going to be on the screen for a bit. Okay, so you'll notice that this editor looks pretty much the same as the other one. Again, uh, you're going to check Enable Custom Palette when you're making any tweaks, because if you're making tweaks, it's going to change stuff that you don't want to change. Uh, so if I want to change this dirt to some pretty blue dirt... Okay. So say I want to change this layer to foreground because I don't like that it's yellow. It stands out too much. If I click on the layer 2 button right here, um, you're going to notice that this didn't change at all. And it's because layer 2 foreground pulls from a different spot of like a different row of the palette than layer 1 foreground does. So if you were going to change this... Hey Ari, thank you for the host. Hope you're doing well. Um, so if you're going to change the layer to foreground because you didn't like it being yellow, you would actually have to change this yellow down here 
because this yellow pulls from a different so like this yellow is actually the foreground even though it's used for layer one coins also um, and this is just standard foreground like if you go into uh, map 16 also it's going to be the same way uh, and basically the rule of thumb for layer two uh, ground stuff is I believe it's only going to pull from row six seven and I believe eight most of the time it's only going to pull from rows six and seven for uh, foreground and stuff that you can interact with and it does this by default so like if you have foreground in a level um, and you're making like this layer two scroll level um, it defaults to actually having distinct ground so you're not just using ground that looks like brown ground rising up and down um, and then also brown ground that doesn't move um, and that sort of ties into the thing that I was talking about earlier with your levels being uh, visually easy to read, I guess. Um, and it looks like that basically covers everything that I had notes on. Um, I did want to load up colors. So I actually found this while I was looking for stuff. And hey, sweet dude, how's it going? And if you ever have uh, issues with like trying to find specific colors and stuff, uh, this site honestly looked pretty cool. Uh, I'm not saying this is like a go-to, like you're only going to be able to find palettes on the site, I guess. But like if you're having a hard time like figuring out where to start with a level, um, and just kind of want the basic palette to start with, uh, these generally work pretty well. Um, so, I think that pretty much wraps up what I had planned for covering. Um, I don't know if you guys had any questions that you wanted to ask. And yeah, that's a good point too. Uh, you can make like literally any color you want in the palette editor. Uh, but I believe the Super Nintendo can only make 256 colors, if I remember right. Uh, so if you're having a bunch, like, if you have a brown right here, and then you have, like, that brown right here, and you have the same palette, but just, like, 5% darker, uh, it, Super Nintendo may not read it quite as well. Um, so you may have to be mindful of changing colors and stuff. Um... And there's a bunch of stuff out there for uh, color guides and stuff if you guys want more info. Uh, I had a bunch of <laughs> like infographics prepped for this, uh, but as I got into it I didn't really want to like bore you guys with like a bunch of color theory stuff. Um, kind of more wanted to focus on uh, like what each color actually changes, because uh, I figured that was probably something that people needed a little bit more help with. Because uh, most of, at least the questions I get about it, are like, what does changing this color actually change? Or if I wanted to change the Roblox, what, like, do I change this one or this one or this one up here? Um, and like, there are guides for that on SMW Central, obviously, but I kind of just wanted to help with walking through with video stuff. Uh, but. I'm going to assume everyone's probably good, so um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, I'm always available on Discord and stuff, uh, but I'll probably be trying to edit this a little bit more. Um, I have to actually download stuff <laughs> to edit, I guess, um, but I'll be trying to edit this down and actually making like a decent formatted tutorial out of it. Uh, but I hope this helped at least a little bit. Um, I didn't really stick to my notes quite as much as I thought I was going to, but also I guess I got more done than I thought I was going to. Um, 